I imagine people saw the title of this video and either have no idea what I'm talking about or have just been spent spiraling back to some very deeply repressed 2012 memories of Tumblr. Uh, either way, I'm sorry. Today, as you saw, we are going to be talking about the Peter Pandem. A few months ago, Jenny Nicholson made a video about this topic on her Patreon, and my YouTube analytics tell me like which channels uh, my subscribers are also subscribed to, and overwhelmingly, y'all are also subscribed to Jenny Nicholson. Um, people of culture, I appreciate. So y'all may have seen this as well, go support her on Patreon. And originally I wasn't going to make a video on the same topic because individuality complex. But after watching Jenny's video, I couldn't help but look into the phenomenon myself and, um, I came across some information that was frankly so unsettling that I could not in good conscience keep it to myself. Do I have you in suspense yet? This isn't an interactive medium, so I, I don't know. But if you've ever been to a Disney park, you'll know that on any given day, there are just tons of Disney characters walking around the park. Certain characters like the Disney princesses will have specific meet and greet locations where you stand in line. You can even get a fast pass for some of them and meet those specific characters. Some of the characters are limited to parades and stage shows and a very select few these days are actually free roaming around the park. And as far as I'm aware, Peter Pan has always been one of those characters. Actually, one of my very first memories uh, was when I was at Disneyland for my fourth birthday and Peter Pan came waltzing by and he said, happy birthday, Ashley, <laughs> or some, something like that. I don't really remember the specifics, but I remember being so impressed that he knew it was my birthday as if I didn't have a giant, it's my birthday button um, on the front of my shirt. I don't know how he does it. And since the flight of Peter Pan was an opening day attraction at Disneyland, Peter Pan has always been in the parks. And actually in the early iterations of the character, Peter Pan was actually played by a woman in the parks, similar to that sort of popular theater trope where women would play young boys. But really since the 80s, Peter Pan has always been played by an adult man because you know, Letting an actual child just run through the park and walk up to strangers is kind of a liability, as it turns out. And because Peter Pan is just free roaming around the parks, there's no like specific time or place that you can go to have a photo with him or get his autograph. And this actually used to be the case for a lot more of the characters. Like I remember when I was a kid, it wasn't uncommon to just see a princess walking around Fantasyland or even like going on rides. But nowadays, if you just like threw Elsa into a, a crowd of children, that would be kind of a safety concern for Elsa and, and the children as well. But Peter Pan, for the most part, has always sort of struck that balance between being just popular enough for kids to be excited when they see him, but not so popular that they're going to like storm the gates of Fantasyland just to go and see him. Some of the other characters that freely walk around, at least pre-COVID, I don't know if they still do at this point, Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Every once in a while, you'll see the country bears, Mary Poppins, of course, all the new Star Wars characters, I think, walk around. And importantly, these walk around characters don't tend to have like an attendant with them the way you do with like a photo op person. There's not somebody who's organizing a line and making sure people are moving through and not staying with the character too long. You know, it's up to the actor to say something in character so that the child doesn't feel upset when Peter moves on to the next person. And another important thing to know about these Disney characters is you never know the real names of the actors who are playing the princesses or playing Mickey Mouse. They're not allowed to post on social media who they play. And I don't even think they're technically allowed to tell people in their real life, but I'm sure most do. Instead, they're supposed to say that they're friends with Cinderella. And it always amazes me when I'll see people on TikTok who haven't worked in the parks for decades, but they will still say that they were friends with so-and-so instead of just saying that they played Ariel. I mean, you give theater kids a rule and they will stick to it. So because guests don't know the names of these real actors, but maybe become more familiar with them or start to recognize them, they'll give them nicknames to sort of identify them on Disney forums and stuff like that. It's kind of like how that one journalist gave the Spice Girls nicknames and then we all had to convince ourselves that Mel B was Scary Spice for some reason. And for this story, the Peter Pan nicknames are actually gonna be kind of important. So here are all of the Peter Pan actor nicknames that I could find. And I'm not entirely sure that all of these are actually completely different actors. I think some of these nicknames just like didn't catch on and they were just like one person's nickname for that actor. But anyways, here's the ones I found. Acorn Pan, Sweet Pea Pan, Smiley Pan, Dimple Pan, Shrimp Pan, King Pan, Huggy Pan, 
and Spieling Pan. But broadly speaking, the Peter Pandem that we're talking about, the Peter Pandem on Tumblr, was primarily focused on Huggy Pan and Spieling Pan. Let me know down below what your nickname would be if you were a Peter Pan actor at Disneyland. I think I would be Shaky Pan or Fainty Pan. I mean, I have hypotension. I was not designed to stand in theme parks for long periods of time. I don't know what they were thinking hiring me. Most of these nicknames are fairly self-explanatory, although I will say that they don't actually really help me in distinguishing a lot of these people. And Spieling Pan is by far the most confusing name. But for those who don't know, uh, Spieling means to reel off, recite, speak glibly, or at length. Does that help you? Supposedly Spieling Pan got his nickname back in 2007 because he would sometimes ride the Storybrooke ride with Wendy and the guests. And normally there's a guide on the boat telling stories about the different things that you're passing by. And Peter Pan would sometimes do that instead. And then over here, this is one of the craziest wild animals in the whole wild kingdom. Those are kids. And you want to watch out because they'll latch on you and they won't let go for a good 18 to 20 years. And so he was doing the boat guide's spiel. He sh Feeling Pan. Other people just say it's because he talks a lot, which I mean, he's Peter Pan. I don't know what they expect. Spieling Pan worked at Disneyland from 2007 to 2011. But as far as I can tell, I think the real internet hype for him really started to pick up steam around 2009 to 2010. And at first this was on like Disney forums and eventually it moved over to Tumblr, which is I would say the most infamous sect of this fandom and really what we're talking about today. You know, people would post videos interacting with him on YouTube. We're stalking Peter Pan and he just turned this corner and Make there he is, video. there he is. Stop running away. Where'd he go? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> there you go. I want to be his Wendy. And then a lot of these interactions would then be turned into really compressed pixelated GIFs. There were of course edits, flower crowns, of course, fan fictions. People really liked trying to get him to say internet memes. Would you be able to say keep calm and stay sassy? What? I think this goes without saying, but don't do this. You keep calm and stay mad. Why would you keep soul. calm? <laughs> uh, Sounds like something a pirate would do. It'd be very boring. And they probably fall asleep a lot, because they do, you know. And then if you just keep calm, you wouldn't go on any adventures, because you'd just be all bored like this. <laughs> no, I don't think you should do that. I think you should, instead of keep calm, you should stay adventurous. And what's the other thing? Well, it was keep something, stay something. Mm -hmm. so keep adventuring, and then what's the other stay, thing? Well, stay sassy, but whatever you want it to be. <laughs> stay not a grown -up. <laughs> Peter Pan has like five things he can talk about. And so if you just give him a deodorant stick, he somehow has to bring that back to fighting pirates and saying, Ugh, Tinkerbell, Ugh. I haven't seen Peter Pan in a long time. I really don't know what he says, but you know, something like that. Peter, can you, Peter, can you say hi to my friends, Harry, they, Liam, Louie, and Niall? Do you want me to say that again? Harry, Zane, Louie, Liam, and Niall? Yeah. But even though Peter Pan only really had so much source material to go off of, pretty soon entire blogs were dedicated to their favorite Peters at Disneyland. Blogs like F Yash Spieling Peter and This Pan Is Hot. Really to the point with their names, I have to say. Honestly, I could try and summarize it for you all I want, but you really need to like see what made this fandom so special for yourself. So here's a little compilation of things I just had to share. I've been a fan of Peter Pan for 15 years now. It's pretty annoying seeing Spieling Pan, Huggy Pan, etc. So many people suddenly become part of the pandem when One Direction and All Time Low made Peter Pan a thing. Something about gatekeeping Peter Pan that just makes me laugh. Here we just have a gif of Peter Pan reading to other Peter Pans. I don't know where those other Peter Pans came from. I'm going to Disneyland at the end of the month and I thought I'd give Peter a letter with all the people that appreciate what he's done for the children he meets every day. Reblog this and I'll put the URL in this letter. I don't care how many notes this gets, I will put everyone who likes or reblogs this in the letter. Show Peter we care about him. Keep adventuring and stay not a grown-up. Here's one of the stories that someone posted about their interaction with Peter. Yesterday, there was a kid near Adventureland who was about four years old or so. He was wearing a princess crown, had a princess wand, the autograph book was princesses, etc. And there was a grown man teasing him about being gay. A grown man. Peter Pan likes to hang around the Adventureland bridge, and he happened upon that scene. Not liking what he saw, especially from a grown-up, he spoke up. Excuse me, sir, but I'm about to give you some advice I never tell anyone. 
grow up. Um, and it doesn't say that everybody clapped, but I do think that that is implied. And then we have this story, which just so y'all are aware, if you're not already aware, does reference self-harm and we'll just unpack it as we go, shall we? I've been wanting to meet Peter for years. Last week, my parents finally took us all to Disneyland. I saw Peter and immediately ran up to him and waved saying he was my hero. He grabbed my arms and saw my self-harm scars and frowned. He quickly said, no, no, you have battle scars. You must have fought off a lot of stinky pirates. You, princess, are my hero. And bowed and kissed my hand before hugging me tightly and whispering, you're beautiful, please stop, in my ear. I cried the rest of the whole day. Yeah, this was probably one of the more infamous Peter Pan experiences that either did happen or probably did not happen. It's a more serious subject for another day, but Tumblr had a very unique relationship to self-harm and the stories like this were not seen as creepy or weird, they were seen as like romantic, I guess. And the actor who played Spieling Peter actually did address the story on his Tumblr, so I feel like I want to put his piece out there as well. He said, just to be clear, there's a post going around about a girl who had pirate scars on her arms and her interaction with Peter Pan. Initially, I thought people were just sharing this with me, but I'm seeing now that I'm being credited for having said these things. While I absolutely support the message, this isn't an interaction I personally had. I will say I experienced similar moments and I'm so happy to see others finding strength from this post but I just wouldn't feel comfortable receiving credit for something I didn't do. This is a subject that is very close to my heart though, and I'm very excited to be getting involved with To Write Love on Her Arms. Check out that website. You are not alone. Hope is real, help is real, your story is important. So if that story did happen, it was not with this spieling Peter. There's also another version of the story that happened supposedly in Disney World. And this version is a little bit less creepy, I will say. The Peter Pan, instead of whispering in her ear that she's beautiful, just says, this means that you grew up too fast, which, you know, I would still say is probably crossing some boundaries, probably still did not happen, but you know, a little less menacing than the other story, at least. And on a lighter note, there's also this picture of him reblocking fan art. I love it. That story alone doesn't tell you that this really is like a 300 level uh, course on Tumblr history. You know, the syllabus is just vibes. Please don't call me professor, just call me Ash, Esquire, of course. What I'm trying to say is that the culture of 2010 to 2014 era Tumblr is something that's so hard to encapsulate with just this one video, but the Peter Pandem would not be what it was without that very intense and unique culture. And so I will try my best to explain this Tumblr community as we go through. Just so y'all know, if you weren't there, this website is a dissertation in itself. So why was Tumblr so obsessed with this adult man uh, acting like a magical little boy? Valid question. For one, I think it's worth mentioning that the Peter Pandem was really exclusively focused on the Disneyland Peter Pans and really not the Disney World Peter Pan. And I think a large part of that is because Disneyland is almost exclusively locals, people who go all the time. And so a lot of the park goers are much more likely to sort of develop relationships, whether voluntarily or not, with the different Peter Pan actors. You know, it's, they're more likely to get recognized by Peter Pan. And of course, there's going to be a lot more content for their Peter Pan blogs if they're going all the time. But obviously it's more than that because it was Peter Pan specifically at Disneyland that went viral. And you know, it may seem arbitrary, but I don't think it's insignificant that the Peter Pan wig that all of the actors had to wear happened to very much resemble the trendy scene haircut of the time, and Spieling Pan in particular has almost the stock image face of the straight man in your high school production of Beauty and the Beast. I mean, he even has a sideways smirk, for God's sake. <laughs> I also found this picture of him playing Terrence, and I shouldn't be surprised because it is just him, but it it's Peter Pan in different font. It is the same goddamn smirk. And ultimately, Peter Pan was such a phenomenon because he happened to fit into this much larger category of Tumblr fandom known as the Tumblr sexy man. Now, the Tumblr sexy man can be a lot of things, but you know it when you see it. Benedict Cumberbatch, the Wensler, a clock, a triangle, but really any Tumblr sexy man was just like a skinny white dude with kind of a sassy attitude and just enough bad boy vibes for teen girls to feel like they could fix them. And even if a Tumblr sexy man was objectively not a tall, skinny, white dude, the fan art would still, it just makes them look like tall, skinny, white dudes. In fact, even the creator of Gravity Falls actually noticed that Bill Cipher, a triangle, 
a triangle, was becoming a Tumblr sexy man and tried to stop it by releasing his canonical version of what Bill Cipher would look like as a human, and it was not enough to stop the sexy man train. Tumblr was a force. And Peter doesn't fit this archetype perfectly. You know, he's not brooding by any means, but because the adult actor who's playing them is supposed to be acting like an immature little boy, a lot of his banter with the guests kind of gives that same energy. I think as an improv exercise, it's just kind of easy for them to be sort of sassy and, and mischievous, and it almost comes off like flirting with the guests, but not quite flirting. And really, I think the fascination with the Peter Pan actor is not so dissimilar to the fascination that happened with Dan and Phil, a video I also made that goes into more depth. You know, in the case of Dan and Phil, they were two British YouTubers who a lot of people shipped at the time, and even though they were not out as gay, a lot of tween girls wanted them to be gay and wanted to imagine them flirting with each other. And part of the reason I think that that was was because it gave teenage girls sort of an outlet to see flirting and to see having like fun interactions with a boy without the same like threat, not just physically, but just like emotionally that can come from, you know, having those interactions with like a straight available guy who's your age. Does that make sense? I, I think a lot of ways the Peter Pan actor is actually pretty similar. You know, the Peter Pan actor isn't going to expect anything from you. It's not like a real relationship. And again, I realize that that can sound kind of twisted. I don't just mean physically. I mean that you don't have to worry about like getting rejected by the Peter Pan actor the way you might by a 15 year old boy in your band class, you know? And as far as I can tell, this fandom really was just like teenage girls. I don't think there were a whole lot of adult women invested in this. If there were more adult women involved in this fandom, I think I would be a little bit more concerned for the Peter Pan actor and his safety. But really, this phenomenon isn't unique. I mean, this plays out with really any celebrity crush or crush you have on a character when you're a teen. Except the Peter Pan actor is not really a character. He's a person working in a customer service position and probably not getting paid a whole lot. So the consequences of this, the consequences of not really being able to set up boundaries with these guests can actually be pretty serious. In a lot of the later Spieling Pan videos, especially the ones in 2011, you'll just see like swarms of teen girls walking around with him on any given day. And although these girls, you know, pay to go to the park, they have every right to interact with a Peter Pan actor, at a certain point this can become a concern for the actor. One concern that doesn't necessarily bother me, but did bother a lot of older people, is that if these teen girls are sort of monopolizing all of Peter Pan's time, he may not have as much time or attention to put on having magical moments with, like, the kids who in their mind think that they're seeing like the real Peter Pan being swarmed by a bunch of teenage girls. And really in fairness, I watched a lot of Peter Pan videos at this point, and all of the actors I think really did their best to give those moments to the kids and get away from those teenage girls whenever they saw a, you know, a little kid dressed up as Peter. So where are we, where are we going, Peter? I don't know, I saw somebody that looked like me, I think I'm gonna take her on adventure. Oh, oh she does look like you. Oh, okay, <laughs> Do they taste like fish? No. Okay, well, I won't. Wait, what do they taste like? Maybe people buried uh, treasure boxes full of shark culture. <laughs> The thing that's really problematic about it is a lot of this footage was taken by teenage girls really zooming in on little children that they did not know interacting with Peter Pan. I don't think any of these parents really had a say in whether their kids would end up in a thirsty gift set on Tumblr. And another related issue is that because Peter doesn't usually have an attendant managing the crowds around him, it is much easier for him to get crowded or get mobbed, you know, it can become a safety concern both for Peter and for all of the guests around him, especially because it's small children who are going to be running up to him the most. And again, Peter in character has to kind of be lighthearted when he has to like maintain space. Can we go on a ride, Peter? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to go on the ride with you. Peter, what are you talking about? Jeez. Go this way. Okay, here's the deal. You have to go find some treasure. And then when you find it, you have to bring it back to me, and then we're gonna go bury it. Okay. Is it a deal? Yes. Pinky swear? Pinky swear. Good. <laughs> I'll see you later, okay? Okay, okay. bye, Peter. Bye, Peter. Bye, Peter. But really, the biggest problem, at least from 
Disney's perspective is that if fans begin to form an attachment to a specific Peter Pan, like say, Spieling Peter, the guests might get upset when they see another Peter Pan actor in one day. And also it makes it more likely that a little kid might overhear, oh, it's Spieling Peter today and not Huggy Peter today. To that little kid, it's just Peter Pan. It's not Spieling Peter or Huggy Peter, and that can really ruin the illusion for them. And as Spieling Peter especially got bigger and bigger online, it became much harder to sort of conceal his identity, and his real name started getting posted just around. And in fairness, a lot of the fan blogs I saw did have like pretty explicit messaging in like their FAQs or their main feed saying not to use his real name because that could risk him getting fired, but it only takes one person to sort of get his name out there, and the internet is forever. So in 2011, Andrew, otherwise known as Spieling Peter, announced that he would no longer be playing Peter Pan at the park. When I had the amazing opportunity to become a lost boy over five years ago, I never could have anticipated how it would change my life. Over the course of my time with Peter Pan, he taught me so many amazing things and allowed me to experience a life primarily reserved for dreams. Every day together was a new adventure, fighting pirates, saving princesses, playing pranks, telling stories, and chasing our own shadows be became daily activities. And that was usually all before lunch. No day was completely without recruiting new lost boys and swearing on pan of death that we should never become pirates. Peter showed me that in each of us is a need to play, and he taught me the importance of make-believe. I will never be able to thank Peter enough for letting me go to Neverland, for letting me swim with the mermaids, dance with the Indians, dodge cannon fire, and sleep on clouds. Those are all experiences I will forever cherish. I should hope that Peter will remember me too, but he does have a tendency to forget. Leaving Neverland for the last time was not my choice. Sadly, it is the fate of all children to grow up, all except one. Still, I wish I didn't have to. I personally want to thank everyone who made my journey the greatest of a lifetime, so thank you. To grow up will be an awfully big adventure, one that I am becoming even more excited about. The internet had pretty much collectively assumed that he either got fired because people found out his name or because he got too famous. But to be very clear, as you saw in the letter, he never explicitly says why he was let go. And the letter more heavily implies, at least to me, that he got fired because he was just getting too old to play the role, which is ironic because the boy who never grows up grew up. I'm, I'm tired. So Disney would have their cast members get checks like every six months to make sure that they still are sort of looking like the character they're meant to portray. And they actually have to re-audition every year. They're not guaranteed the role. And a lot of times when the actors will get too old for a certain character, they won't be outright fired, at least that's my understanding. They'll often graduate to other roles in the parks. Like, I think a lot of Disney princesses, when they're too old to play a princess, will start playing Mary Poppins. Or, you know, they could just be put in a whole other department, like guest relations or becoming a ride attendant. But also, I mean, this is a minimum wage job, and by the time people have aged out of playing a character, they may just want to, you know, not make minimum wage working in the hot California sun all day. And. This story had always been presented to me as there was this Peter Pan and everyone loved him so much and stalked him in the parks and were so obsessed over him that he got fired. That could still be true, we, we don't know. But I had always just kind of assumed that the Spieling Peter actor would maybe quietly go offline and be kind of resentful to the Tumblr community who cost him his job that he very clearly loved. But in a very wholesome twist, Andrew has fully embraced uh, the fandom that surrounded his Peter character. The Tumblr fandom really continued on even though he stopped working in 2011. Like I was still seeing posts about him well up until like 2014. Spieling Peter was just as popular then as he was when he worked in the parks. Andrew would frequently post fan arts, edits of him in his costume. He even posted like a few vlogs where he went back to Disneyland and interacted with the new Peter Pans. He ended up modeling for this Peter Pan merch for a company called Adorkable. I can't think of a more quintessentially 2013 image than this one. And he worked as a Peter Pan actor for a different entertainment company. I think like the kind that shows up to kids' birthdays and stuff. He also served as a creative consultant on a short film based on the Peter Pan story called East of Kensington. I don't know what I was expecting East of Kensington to be, but it was not this. It's time to go back to Neverland. Oh no. Oh my 
people. I won't discuss this any further. The Redskins have made me an honorary warrior. Please, Peter. It was our favorite game. It is customary that I, the great white father of the Pickaninny Braves, pass the pipe to newcomers. Yes. A ceremony. There are like other scenes to pull from, guys. There are I know that's from the movie, but there are there are other references to make. You know, it could be the beginning of something totally new with the entire Peter Pan. Uh, genre and style. Yeah, for a while, Andrew really used his newfound internet fame. I mean, he had a vlogging channel with his girlfriend, then wife, Hallie. Hallie and Andrew are high school sweethearts who worked together while he was at the Disney parks. And do you want to guess what her job was? She was Wendy. That is that is the most wholesome thing I've ever heard. She was also Alice, but it's, it's much more wholesome to focus on uh, the fact that she was Wendy. And when these two got engaged, even though this was again after he had stopped playing Peter Pan at the parks, and another wholesome twist, the pandem actually helped them win a contest to win their dream wedding. Some fans also made edits of their wedding. And it's high time that Wendy becomes a princess. And it's high time that Peter realizes that she deserves a prince. Because when you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. Which, uncomfortable to me, but uh, Andrew and Hallie again seem to en enjoy it. At least they never said anything to the contrary. Genuinely, I was surprised at how welcoming they were to this whole fan base. I mean, look at this post Andrew made on his Tumblr. Hey everyone, I'm getting married to Hallie. Fandom. Oh my god, Andrew, he was spieling Peter. Congratulations, you perfect human being. Hallie, I'm getting married too, guys, but spieling Peter. I was a Wendy and Alice, but Peter Pan, but I- Peter Pan! Spieling Peter Pan. Andrew, IRL. Just saw this and thought it was funny. Showed it to Hallie, who burst out laughing and said she wishes she had a Tumblr just to reblog this. High fives, fandom. I also mentioned earlier that the pandem wasn't just limited to Spieling Pan. The other popular Peter Pan at the time was Huggy Pan. And when I was watching a lot of old footage, I noticed a lot of the pan content came from this one particular vlogger. Oh, it's Wincy! Oh my god! You did! Here, right? you did. Oh. How are you today? I'm you awesome. Well, that's good. And again, in my cynical mind, I was like, this Peter actor must be like so annoyed that this girl keeps coming up to him and making content off of him. But in yet another wholesome twist, the Huggy Pan actor and this vlogger actually became friends outside of the park and like hung out years later. Oh my gosh, I'm in the car with this person. <laughs> now we ran out of pixie dust, now we're, <laughs> now, we're a, <laughs> now we're in a Mini Cooper <laughs> trying to find a place. And apparently Huggy Pan is a professional clown now. And not just like metaphorically like me, like he, he is a clown professionally for a living. Even though this story is uh, much more wholesome than I anticipated and did not have really the moral I was planning to bring with this story, I still can't ignore the intensity that the pandem had. And I'm sure by now you've all forgotten the disturbing discovery that I mentioned I made at the beginning of this video. Well, when Jenny reminded me of this pandem's existence, I started looking up the Peter Pan like hashtags on Tumblr and I still have my old Tumblr account from when I was a teenager. And would you like to guess where maybe half of these images I've been showing on screen this whole time came from? The cringe is coming from inside the house. I truly must have repressed like so deeply in my memory, like how deep I was in this fandom because I was pretty sure I had reblogged like one or two of these things. But no, to my great shame, I was like completely unironically reblogging that self-harm story as if it was the most romantic thing I had ever seen. And it's honestly not even the worst thing I saw on my old Tumblr. The worst thing was definitely this gif of the Dan Howell nip slip. Dan, I'm sorry, I've changed, I swear. And even though I've changed and am now a flawless, infallible human being, there are elements of the Peter Pandem that definitely still exist in some form. I mean, I hope I'm not the only one who sees countless videos on TikTok of women harassing the Kylo Ren actor at Disneyland. The pipeline. The pipeline is real. I realize now that I'm saying this, I do also have a pretty Kylo Ren forward TikTok for you page, especially for 2022. So hopefully y'all know what I'm talking about and this isn't just me. And I know for sure I am not the only one who has seen footage of Jake Novak working at Disneyland after he went viral this summer. And you know, if the Peter Pandem can be a lesson to all of us about at least one thing, let's just not harass customer service workers 
no matter how oo-woo or cringe we think that they are, um, because that's no good. All right, well, that's all the light for today, and that's all I have for today. So I hope you all like this one. I hope you all found it as fascinating as I did, and I hope that you'll um, still be able to look me in the eye after seeing what I reblogged as a 14-year-old. And in other news, I'm actually like not sitting on the floor today. Are we impressed? I'm impressed. I have like not had a desk in years, which is crazy, right? Like you should have a desk. I didn't have a desk at my house and I didn't have a desk at my parents' house. So that's why every video you've ever seen of me, I'm pretty much always on the floor. And I certainly enjoyed being able to like sit like a grown up in a chair at a desk with goose in the background. And my partner, Dan, he recently like built his new Epic gaming computer. So I got his old Epic gaming computer and now I have a desk on which this epic gaming computer stands. I mean, it's actually on the side because that's how computers work. And so opinion poll time. If I started streaming on Twitch with this new epic gaming computer, would anyone be interested in that? Because I might just do that anyways. Um, and if y'all want to come, that would be cool as well. That is, that is enough of my rambling. Anyways, I hope y'all are having a great, great day, great time. Winter is not a great period of the year. So I just hope we're all taking care of ourselves, you know? And if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all, of course, in the next one. Bye.